Welcome to Beat Source Tech. My name is Mojax, and today we have a brand new product on deck for you. We're taking a look at the DJM S5, the most affordable S series battle mixer that Pioneer DJ have made to date. The DJM S5 is a two channel battle mixer designed primarily for use with Serato DJ Pro. It unlocks the full version of that software, so you won't need to spend out on any licenses unless you need any of the optional extra features. It's set to have a street price of around $800 in the US, which makes it, by my standards, a mid range device. Not the sort of thing you'd buy as a first mixer, but also not up there with pro level kits like the S7 and S11. Pioneer DJ described the target market of the S5 as hobbyist. DJs and that sits right with me. You have to be a pretty dedicated DJ to drop almost $1500 on a DJM S7 or $2100 on an S11. I normally don't like to mention competing products in reviews, but the new Mark Scratch is relevant to this conversation. On paper, it offers similar functionality to the S5, but is priced around $500. What you'll see though, as we go through the features of the S5, is that it does offer quite a bit more, and of course, the S5 is launching at a time when there is rampant inflation going on everywhere in the world. So as far as pricing goes, I'm pretty happy with the S5. Perhaps the first thing you'll notice when looking at the mixer is its redness, and this immediately brought me joy. It was only recently that I was discussing on this channel about how DJ gear needs more colour brought back to it, and well, here we are. It really pops, whether in a dark or light environment, and the extra splashes of red towards the top of the mixer make for a very attractive theme in my eyes. If you really, really hate red, then you can always skin it, but personally, I really dig the look. Construction is quite similar to the higher end S series mixers with a plastic body and metal faceplate. It doesn't feel any less sturdy than those, which we know last, so I'm very happy with that. It is a touch smaller than they are at around 9.6 inches wide compared to 10.5 and shorter front to back as well. As it has less controls on board, however, it doesn't feel cramped by comparison. There is plenty of room to work with. The one slightly odd section of the construction is the window on the front panel, which allows you to see the Magvel Pro Crossfader in action. Whilst this is in theory a very cool idea, in practice it's entirely pointless, as the fader is an enclosed unit. When you move it, nothing at all happens to the fader body. It's not doing any harm having it there, it's not a downside, just, as I say, kind of pointless. Speaking of the fader, that Magvel Fader Pro is the same as those in the S7 and S11, so subsequently I'm very familiar and comfortable with it. There will always be those who prefer Inno faders or the Rain Mags, but there's no question that it is a top tier crossfader and the favourite of many DJs, with adjustable tension via a knob on the front panel, a super clean cutoff and short cut in distance, adjustable in the settings utility software. There is only a two position curve control, which is accessed by pressing Shift and F effects buttons, as is the crossfader reverse. I do appreciate that being on the mixer rather than just in software, as some DJs do like to swap from regular to hamster quite often. The up faders are, I believe, the same as those on the S7, which means they're nothing to write home about, but also that they do a decent job. Unlike the S7 and S11, there is no way to adjust the curve on them, but they have a smooth, gradual fade, which I'm happy with, although turntablists who cut on the up faders will need to look elsewhere. We'll get to the pads next. They are clicky buttons made of ABS rather than rubber, but do feel very responsive in use, and the size is certainly generous enough. Of course, the big thing here is that there are only four of them on each side. Just above is a button which switches to pads five to eight in the software, so if you have lots of hot cues on your tracks, for example, you can still access those without too much fuss. It's how the pads work which really does level up the S5 over the aforementioned Newmark Scratch. On the S5, the pads are our RGB color as opposed to a single color which makes it easy to discern which mode you're in and there are a lot more modes to work with. There is hot cue, gate cue, pitch play if you have pitch and time, the S5 doesn't unlock that, roll, cue loop, slicer loop, auto loop, saved loop, save flip again if you have flip, sampler, scratch bank and a transport mode. Plus there are four user modes which you can map to your own taste in Serato DJ Pro. Compared to the scratch's three modes this is obviously a significant significant upgrade, as is the fact that on the S5 you can choose different pad modes on each deck. Modes are selected by holding down the mode button and choosing the marked mode, and the others can be chosen with a combo of shift plus mode or multiple taps that can be selected in the settings. 
One thing to note, there are no parameter buttons on the S5, so you are limited to what's displayed on the Serato screen when it comes to loop ranges, slicer parameters, etc. Also on the subject of looping, that is fairly limited. Outside of the pad modes, by holding shift and the pad 5 to 8 button, you can activate either the current loop length in Serato or a default beat value chosen by yourself in the settings. It's workable, but not as flexible as having the halve and double buttons on the S7 or S11. We'll move on to effects. There is a hardware combo filter, which works well with any source, but there are no hardware beat effects on the DJM S5, and instead the mixer relies on the internal software effects in Serato DJ Pro. Control is simple, you have buttons to choose up to six from Serato's long list of effects, and you have a depth control as well as beat length buttons to adjust timing. The effects are activated by the now familiar paddle controls, which lock on when pushed away from you and spring back when pulled towards you. The paddles have a really good feel to them and are a very intuitive way of working. The effects work in an insert fashion, so you have post fader and post cross fader echo tails, for example, which is essential for the way I work. The problem is, and I might sound like a broken record at this point, but Serato's effects remain in desperate need of a refresh. You can't save your own presets, stock effects like the Echo just don't sound very good, and they simply aren't designed to work with this new effects paddle paradigm, which is the standard on many devices now. Back in the day, most Serato-specific hardware had way more effects knobs and buttons to work with. This isn't to say that you can't get some good results with the software effects after a bit of tweaking, but it can still be a bit frustrating when you're used to the top-notch hardware effects which Pioneer DJ mixes are renowned for. Will this apply to the hobbyist level DJs who are the target market for the S5? Perhaps not, but it's beyond time for Serato to step up and bring us some awesome new effects. The software deserves it. Also accessible from the effects buttons by long pressing them is the scratch cutter mode. Like other features of this type, it enables a kind of auto fader cut, which will cut the sound in and out as you move the record back and forth, recreating scratch patterns. There are six to choose from, and you can adjust the speed with the effects beat buttons. As with similar features I've tried before, it's fine. It does what it's intended to do. And I like to think of it more of a scratch training tool where you try and copy the patterns rather than a cheat mode. As time goes on, I do find myself wondering if anyone is actually using this kind of feature and whether the manufacturers are perhaps wasting their energy by creating them. Do let me know in the comments below if you find them useful as I'd be happy to be proved wrong on that. There is another performance feature on the S5 called Crossfader Hot Cue. The idea is that every time you close and then open the crossfader, it goes to your last cue point, with the idea being that you can stab in a cue point with just one movement. It sounds very cool, but with the beta version of the software and firmware I was using, it didn't work, so I can't pass any judgment on that feature either way. Queuing will be familiar to users of other S-series mixers with a fader to go between decks, a level control and cue master blend knob. The front panel features both sizes of headphone socket which is always appreciated. The sound is good and the volume is punchy, but I really don't know what Pioneer DJ have against split cue lately. It's not available on the hardware and with the beta of Serato I've been using, it's not in the software either. I don't actually use split cue myself, but I know lots of DJs who rely on it, so I'll always keep fighting for you guys and girls. It should be standard on everything, always in my opinion. As for the other controls on the channels, you have a three band full kill EQ on each deck, as well as a trim control. Nothing noteworthy, but they all do their job without any issue. The layout is good, maximizing space while keeping controls close at hand. Another thing which isn't found on the Newmark but is on the S5 is a complete set of library controls. Track browsing and loading is fully taken care of by the knob and two buttons in the center, and it is a welcome feature. It did mess with my muscle memory a little, as on the other S-series mixers, the load buttons are below the browse knob, not above as they are on the S5, but that shouldn't be a factor for a typical S5 buyer. I'll talk about connections next. There is a stereo aux input on RCAs, as well as a mic input with my preferred XLR and jack combo socket. Both have volume controls on the front panel, and whilst the mic doesn't have any extra controls to shape the sound, it does sound good. It's also sent through the USB output of the mixer, so the S5 is a great choice for live streaming use. 
The two main channels have one set of RCA inputs, switchable between line and phono level with a hardware switch. The phono preamps are good, perhaps not quite on a level with the S7 and S11, but certainly superior to the DJM S9, with a lot more clarity and less muddiness compared to that. I'd be perfectly happy playing one of my 45 sets on the S5. I was also delighted to find in my testing that the Serato DJ Pro FX, because they're set up as inserts, will also work with other sources. So whilst you will need to have a laptop connected, you can play vinyl sets, for example, with the S5 and utilize post fader effects, tapping tempo via the hardware button on a shift. In terms of outputs, you have a master and a booth with separate level controls. The master has balanced XLRs and the booth is on unbalanced RCAs, so you should be able to connect to any setup. As for sound quality, for the money, it's decent. The S5 is not as highly specced as the more expensive S mixers in areas like signal to noise ratio, and you can hear it a little when going between them. But we're talking about a mixer which is priced well below those, and so yeah, for $800, I think the sound of the S5 is perfectly respectable. The last set of connections on the rear panel is for power, and this is where the S5 gets really, really interesting. Rather than having an IEC socket or a DC barrel jack, you instead have a pair of USB-C ports. One is marked for power and the other is for your computer, but you may not actually need both because the S5 can be powered by USB bus power. This is common with controllers, but on big name mainstream mixers, I don't believe we've ever seen it before and it works really well. You have two options, power the device via a USB power brick and just use the computer port for data, or go bus powered and do everything via the one cable. And in my testing, I found zero difference in performance for each method. I would say that the only time you'd really need to use the power connection would be if you want to use the mixer without a laptop attached. It does demand a decent amount of juice from the USB power supply, at least 5 watts, so your old school 4.7 watt iPhone charger brick won't suffice, but the typical 10 watt or higher ones found today will work great. I guess it's for that reason that Pioneer DJ don't recommend that you use the S5 with a USB power bank, but I tried that anyway, with one which pumps out enough wattage and it worked perfectly well. Your mileage may vary. Why is all of this useful? Well, it cuts down on extra cables and outlets required. It also means you can build a really portable setup, run the S5 into your computer, bus powered, add a couple of portable turntables, and you have a complete Serato DJ Pro DVS setup with no power needed. Combine that with a battery powered speaker or two, and you have a whole system ready for park or beach jams, anything like that. Are there any downsides? Well, the lower power draw does seem to mean that the overall output volume of the S5 is a touch lower than a typical IEC powered mixer. It's not dramatic, but it is noticeable. If you swap the S5 into a venue setup instead of, say, an S11, you would definitely have to crank things a little higher. But that's not what the S5 is for, and so on balance, I'm really into the way it works. I'll also just add that when it comes to USB-C itself, as opposed to the traditional USB-B found on DJ Gear, it's time for that to become standard. USB-C has been around for years now, it's found on every recent laptop, and the convenience of running USB-C to USB-C at each end of a cable has to be the way forward. DJ Gear manufacturers, let's have more of this, please. So there you go, my thoughts on the DJM S5 from Pioneer DJ. Overall, a very solid addition to the S series of mixers, the most affordable one to date and yeah it does a great job it's got loads and loads of features on there definitely do help it to level up over the competition so although it costs a little bit more maybe than the competition i do think the value is there if you've got the budget for it absolutely i really like the design that bright vibrant red looks fantastic and it fits into a professional environment very well you've got the balanced outputs etc i love that convenience of having the usb bus power so yeah, overall, it is a solid recommend from me. One thing I would say to you, don't get tempted. If you're a, an existing, say, S9 user, and you're thinking, well, this thing looks and performs so similarly, maybe I could just, you know, my aging S9 needs to be replaced. Maybe I could go for an S5 instead of spending an extra 650 bucks on an S7. I think that would not be a wise move because what you are lacking is not so much the features on the mixer, there's just not as many controls on the S5 as there is on an S9, S7, or S11. So for that kind of DJ who's working in those kind of high stress environments, yes, you're probably gonna want to spend the extra and go for an S7 or an S11 instead. But for home use, for kind of intermediate DJing, for parties and so on, 
the S5 is a fantastic bit of kit and as I say, fully recommended. Really, really good device. Now, in the comments below this week, I'd like you to sound off about effects. I talk about effects a lot, software effects, hardware effects, and I use them a lot too. I use them almost to a fault in my DJing. I use echoes and delays pretty much constantly. Every single blend I do, there's some kind of echo or delay or reverb going on there. So I'd like to know what kind of effects do you work with? Do you work with software effects or hardware effects? What are your favorite effects? What effects do you think are kind of overused in the DJ world? And which effects do you think are kind of underutilized? Do you think more DJs should be thinking about? Do let us know your thoughts. Thank you for watching this episode of Beat Source Tech. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you next time.